Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review we are looking at the SH Figure Arts One Piece Nami figure. I always show the packaging on the smaller imports just briefly because some people do collect them since they have the nice window and a really nice design and they show some stuff on the back. So there we go. Now One Piece is one of those animes or animes that's rather polarizing it seems. Some people love it, some people hate it. You usually fall into one of those categories. I have yet to be swayed to loving it, but I do enjoy the show even though it's a little bit more fantastical than I would typically care for, but I do like it. This happens to be the first of the figures that I've purchased, so I figure we might as well take a look at it. Uh, let's, let's go ahead. Now you should know if you're not familiar with One Piece, the uh, artwork is a little stylized. And so if you're thinking she has really big feet, she does, but it looks exactly like that in the show, so it's, it's definitely meant to be that way. She stands, she's pretty much straight up and down right now, about five, just over five and a half inches tall, so she's not in scale with your standard six inch figures, but she is in scale with just about every other small scale import, whether it's Revoltech or uh, D-Arts, Figure Arts, um, Figma, any of those, she'll be in scale with that. So she actually does look almost exactly like she looks in the show or even in the books. So that's really nice. They did a good job. And she comes with a pretty good arrangement of accessories. She has this energy effect, which is meant to go on the end of her, excuse me, the end of her staff, which is called the Clima Tact, I believe. Uh, I just got to that part in the show uh, yesterday, actually. So I might have remembered it incorrectly, but that snaps on there. Nice translucent plastic. This is just a solid piece of plastic. It has some detail work in there on the ball areas, but she can hold that in her hands. I'll show you which hands she has in a second. She also has, use my knife without destroying the backdrop to get these parts out. She also has the staff, which does in the show come apart and she can use it in different ways, the three different pieces. Now, since she can't hold three pieces at once, this one has that little thing on there, and I'll show you what that's for real quick. You can put it on her belt by popping off that little panel. Now, I can't really grab it with my fingernails, but a little bit of a knife tip or some tweezers maybe, something like that. That just pops off, and this piece pops in. It works nicely, and so that's connected to her belt. It does have a bit of a strap, but they didn't paint that, so that's a little disappointing. And then she can hold the other two pieces in her hands. So I think that's some really nice planning on Bandai's part. They did a good job with that. We'll set that aside for now, though. Put that back in, if I can. You have to line it up just right or it won't fit in properly. And there we go. Now she has a total of five different heads, just the standard head. Now this is where I start to have a bit of an issue with the figure just because typically her eyes are much darker than that, so it kind of throws off the look, but they're still pretty well done. So that's the normal head. Let's zoom in a little bit to get better lighting. I think that'll help. So we have the one normal head there, and then the interchangeable faces. I'll just pop them all out real quick to show you. Now remember I said this show's a little bit more uh, fantastical, a little bit less serious most of the time, so we do have some kind of playful faces. This one's just a pretty standard one, though, kind of a smirk with the eyes off to the side, so that's pretty normal. Then we have this one, which is just a happy face. I'll show you how they interchange in a second. And then we have these two, which are definitely more animated, and this is kind of a familiar look for a lot of the uh, less serious animes, but they do have that for her, and then she always steals money, and she's all about money, so she's got the Barry logo, which is the currency in the show, so that's pretty cool. If you watch the show, you'll understand it. Now, to swap them out, you just pull on the hair, very similar to the uh, Dragon Ball Z figures. Just pop the hair out like that, and then you can pop the face off. It works really well. They all fit nicely. That just pulls out from that tab, and then you can swap the other ones in. I don't really need to bother doing it, because you guys can do that yourself. But, that's how it works. Then you can just push the hair back in, and it's done rather nicely. And lastly, for the accessories, we have a bunch of hands. We have the two open hands. With the fingers kind of bent back a little bit, and I can't really even do it. But so the fingers kind of have a curve to them that way on those two open hands. Then we have seven other hands. So they definitely didn't leave any out. We have one thumbs up hand, so that's just for posing purposes. We have two open hands, 
with the fingers curled slightly so you can use those for whatever you want then we have two gripping hands for the various staff pieces this one is a little tighter than this one the her right hand is a little tighter than the left uh, that might just be mine, so this one has a little trouble holding it sometimes, but you can usually get it to work out okay. And then lastly, she has two fist hands, so plenty of options there. Okay, let's take a look at the figure itself, since that's the most important part. I think we should probably do that. As far as articulation goes, the head, ball hinge, standard uh, SH figure arts ball hinge, it swivels at the top and at the bottom and is hinged. Then the neck itself is on at least a single ball peg, maybe a double ball peg. So you can get the head to move around pretty much however you could want it to move. You won't have any trouble at all posing that. And the hair is a little bit soft. It's not super soft, but it shouldn't get in the way too, too much. The shoulders have this kind of cool, I think it's cool anyway. It's uh, kind of like a floating shoulder joint. It's really just a ball peg, but the way it's sculpted, it's a little different than normal. So you can move that all around like the standard ball peg that they have on like the Dragon Ball figures. But it's actually sculpted so that you can get the arm across the chest better if you wanted to. You have to rotate it. But you can bring it across a little bit, not a whole lot, but more than you could otherwise. And it's just kind of got a, a strange ball hinge design. But once you have the figure in hand, you'll see that it actually does work really well. It might look odd to you right now, but you'll get used to it really quickly, and it's pretty effective. So you have the bicep swivel in there and the hinge on top of that floating joint. We have a single hinge for the elbow, but you get way better than 90 degrees. You actually get better than 45 degrees on that, so that's really good. And technically it can swivel too, so that's pretty good. Although it does stand out a little bit, and it's a little bit of an ugly joint but she's got really skinny arms, so it's a little excusable, I think. She does have her, um, I can't think of what it's called now, but this thingy on here, and another little bracelet right there. Those are both loose pieces, though, so when you swap out the hands, be careful that you don't lose these, because they will come off, and you don't have spares. But then you can see here that the hand is actually just a really, or the wrist is a tiny little ball hinge, and that's how you swap the hands on and off. So we'll just put those back on so I don't lose them. Don't want a cat to get a hold of them or something. Those guys like to steal accessories. All right, so we have that. Now the torso, upper torso underneath her shirt is at least a single ball peg. I'm thinking it's a double, but it might be a single. It doesn't have the greatest range of motion. You do get the uh, swivel out of it, no problem. She does lean forward and back and side to side. It just doesn't have a huge range of motion. Lower torso, single ball peg for sure on this one, but you do actually get really good range of motion. She leans really far back, and the sculpt goes pretty far down, so as long as you don't go quite that far, you won't see the gap, so that's pretty good. Leans side to side, again, really well. You don't see any of the gaps inside there, so that's pretty good. Leaning forward, she doesn't go nearly as far, but leaning backwards, she does. And I don't know if you can tell, because I think that my lights might be washing it out, but they did a really good job sculpting her abdomen. It's very organic looking. It doesn't look like a cartoon, even though kind of parts of her do. So they did a good job of capturing the... Sometimes in the show they look a little more realistic than other times. So it's kind of all infused into the figure, and I think it works pretty well. The skirt sculpted pretty well. It is a harder plastic. It's not completely hard. It does have some give to it but it will get in the way of articulation sometimes. You're not going to get the most dynamic poses out of her, but you'll probably be able to get enough of them. And for those of you that are wondering, she does have underwear on, so don't uh, don't get this figure thinking, ooh, it has a short skirt, Franco, I'm talking to you. If you guys don't know who Franco is, then you don't understand that joke, but he does, so I'm, I made it anyway. But anyway, the, the hips don't have the greatest range of motion due to the skirt, but they do have the standard swivel in the um, in the thigh joint there. The ball peg for the hip does not drop down like the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z figures. It's just a static ball peg, but you do get some of the standard articulation. You probably don't need it for her because she's not like the exactly like fighting like Spider-Man or anything like that. So standard posing should be okay. Single jointed knee just like the arms. Pretty much the same range of motion. It is hidden a little bit better because well, I guess it's not so much different at, at all once you put it straight out. So it's hidden from the front, or in this case from the back. But then once you pose it, you can see the joint. But that happens on action figures, so it's no big deal. The ankles are very similar to the uh, Power Rangers figures, if you've seen me review those. 
they lean back just fine almost all the way here I guess we'll do it on this one no problem at all they don't go forward too too far they do run into the leg joint or I mean the leg sculpt so a little bit better articulation would have been nicer for that better range of motion but it does swivel at both ends so you can give her an ankle rocker no problem at all and then lastly we have a bit of a toe joint but you don't really get much out of it it goes from that to that so that's a little disappointing it does go all the way down I don't know why that exists but it does paint work on the feet could be better it's a little sloppy on the feet hopefully you can see that it's not horrible but it's not great everywhere else it's pretty good so I'm, I'm really happy with the figure overall I'm definitely gonna pick up uh, I actually have Luffy coming already and I'm probably gonna get Sanji and Ace since those are the only ones only other ones they've made but I do recommend it if you're a One Piece fan or a fan of Nami or a fan of short skirts then this is probably a figure you'll want to get it's really well done and it's usually fairly inexpensive so there it is guys thanks for watching stay tuned for more figure reviews custom figures and other good stuff and in the meantime keep collecting <laughs>